So the, uh, the wishbone episodes of the moment are Viva Wishbone, based on the uh, story, uh, uh, the legend Our Lady of Guadalupe about the founding of Mexico, and the Entrepreneur, which is based on the story of King Midas from the epic poem Metamorphoses by Ovid. Uh, it's another instance where I haven't read either of these things. I, I have, and in the case of the legend of the founding of Mexico, it's one of those, I don't know if there's a definitive written version of it. Uh, obviously, Metamorphoses is an epic poem that there is a written version of. I don't have a copy, um, but everybody knows King Midas. I've seen many versions of King Midas. I have read, and I probably had read it before I saw this episode, um, and by that I mean it was probably read to me uh, because of how young I was, uh, The Chocolate Touch, which is a little middle grade novel. I don't remember who wrote it. Um, but is based on the uh, the, uh, the Golden Touch, uh, King Midas. Um, so I've got those two, and uh, neither of neither of these uh, is based on something that I myself was in a uh, middle school student movie version of. So uh, that uh, that streak ended with the last little video that I did. Um, both very interesting, and I will get to them. But first. Uh, the, uh, the credits rolling at the beginning of Viva Wishbone had something unexpected, uh, and, um, and I rarely pay attention to the credits, um, but it said, written by, the episode was written by Mo Rocca, who I remember both from his time on The Daily Show when I was in high school, and uh, yesterday morning, mere hours before I was watching these episodes, um, doing his, uh, his segment on CBS Sunday Morning about uh, visiting the graves of dead presidents. Um, he's, a, he's, a, he's a guy who is not first and foremost in my, uh, in my you know, media intake, but he's always just kind of there. And he's usually a lot of fun. I can't think of a time he hasn't been fun. Um, but to think that this was one of his first writing jobs, Wishbone, uh, it's kind of like finding out that Brian Cranston, one of his earliest acting gigs, was doing the voices of some of the villains in Power Rangers. Uh, and so by the time I'm seeing him in a play on Broadway, I'm thinking, wow, I was a fan of Power Rangers, he was in Power Rangers. I was a fan of Malcolm in the Middle, he was a fan of, he was uh, the dad of Malcolm in the Middle. I was Breaking Bad fan, he was in Breaking Bad, and now Broadway. Um, so it's kind of like that with Mo Rocca. Wishbone, The Daily Show, CBS Sunday Morning, everything in between that I've kind of picked up on him from. Um, so that's a fun thing that I that I noticed. Uh, so before I get going on the actual content of the episodes, uh, the uh, I just I, I wanted to uh, I have sometimes thought occasionally considered because of the age we live in, which is the age of rebooting everything, especially at this time from the 90s. Uh, if they if they did Wishbone today, if they redid it, and one thing that they would probably want to do if they redid uh, Wishbone is they would want to diversify the literature used. It's, uh, it, it, it did a, a reasonable job of, you know, amidst the Dickens and the Shakespeare and uh, the, uh, the um, uh, Victor Hugo, uh, putting in African American legends, uh, founding of Mexico, Paw Prince of Thieves, Arabian Nights, um, and there's a Native American-based episode coming up. Um, but they'd want to do more of that if they, if they redid it today. And um, putting aside copyright issues and, and all of that, um, there's, there's one thing that is a, not an insurmountable problem, but I'm, I'm not exactly sure what the solution would be, and that is that Wishbone, the character, the dog, has to be plugged into the story. So that's the whole point. Wishbone enters the story and tells the story, but is also part of the story. And so it, it kind of uh, it comes up against uh, the idea of appropriate representation. If you're going to have uh, a story, uh, say from the Harlem Renaissance, uh, that deals with black people, but Wishbone is voiced by uh, uh, Larry uh, Brantley, who is a white guy, or if well, they kind of, with, with Joan of Arc, Wishbone wasn't Joan, because Joan is a woman. Um, but Wishbone was an, an, an adjacent male character. But if you, want, if you wanted Wishbone to take a central uh, role, um, it's just a matter of, uh, you know, 
if, if the dog is only voiced by one person, that is the voice of Wishbone, can Wishbone be plugged into stories that are not about who that person is? Now, on the one hand, the dog's got to be plugged in, but maybe you have different voices if, like, Wishbone has a voice, but then if Wishbone is, enters the story as someone else, you get a different actor to play, an appropriate actor to play that voice. The dog is what is seen on screen, uh, and then you surround them with actors who are appropriately cast. Um, but the dog is what is seen, so then maybe it doesn't matter. Uh, but it probably does. But that's just, it's, it's not insurmountable, and I'm certainly not advocating for more reboots, because I don't think we need them. I think that Wishbone is a wonderful for what it was at the time. I'm glad we have it. We should do more. We should build on it, not necessarily just bring it back. But it comes into play here with Viva Wishbone and with Arabian Nights and with uh, the African American Tales, where uh, it was essentially a white guy playing playing a dog, playing a white dog, playing um, uh, non-white characters. Um, so there it is. Um, that's just a, a thought that I want to share, especially considering uh, Viva Wishbone. So Viva Wishbone, it's uh, kind of kind of like uh, has, um, the uh, David and Goliath one, religious themes, uh, the Virgin Mary or the spirit of the Virgin Mary uh, is Our Lady uh, of Guadalupe, and she uh, appears to Wishbone playing a character called Juan Diego, uh, saying, you have to meet with the bishop and tell the bishop that I said, I, the, uh, the uh, part of the Trinity, said, build a house of worship. Uh, and there's back, back, some back and forths about, um, tell her to give me a sign. And uh, not really much to the story. It is told by the character of Senora Julia, who is an old friend of the Talbot family, who apparently, I guess, helped raise Joe, uh, especially after his father died, and has been away for a while. Now she's come back for a visit. Um, and the episode features uh, the uh, awkward uh, trope of Wanda trying to learn Spanish and use Spanish, uh, e even though, as Senora Julia says, she speaks English, and so they can just speak English. And she gives Joe the book, The Legends of Mexico. So as opposed to Wishbone pulling the book off the shelf, or the book appearing in a nicely, uh, nicely decorated little pillow, which sometimes happens in the episodes, as Wishbone says, in this book, by this person, this happens. Uh, it, uh, it's a gift, and it's interesting. It's kind of like uh, David's uncle, I think it was, uh, bringing not a book necessarily, but the idea of African folktales and storytelling uh, person to person, uh, oral tradition. Um, and... But the the story is what what Joe is going through. It's a Joe centric episode. Very, they're both of these are very Joe centric. Uh, Mother's Day is coming up, and I guess that's part of the reason Senora Julia is visiting for whatever reason. Um, but Joe is jealous of this uh, older high school aged kid who his mother the kid recently lost his parents and his and he works at the library and Joe's mother is helping him apply for college and just mentoring him and Joe is jealous. Uh, apparently this uh, kid has some resources um, and is giving his mother nice presents. So Mother's Day is coming up. Joe wants to give his mother a nicer present than, uh, let's see, Michael is the name of uh, Ellen's protege. Um, and he thinks that this happens through uh, money. So uh, Michael got her an expensive gift. He wants to get her an expensive gift. Ends up spending what he refers to as most of his life's savings on a very nice musical box from an antique shop. Apparently his mother had mentioned she liked it, and so he goes to get it, and uh, then ultimately breaks it. And um, Senora Julia telling him the story of Our Lady of Guadalupe is, and uh, having faith in your mother uh, is, is, is kind of her way of emphasizing, uh, don't worry about the people who are family. They will love you and appreciate you, you just have to uh, love and appreciate them and make sure that they know that. Uh, you don't have to get them a fancy musical box. Um, and uh, Joe drops it, it breaks, and ultimately uh, Michael uh, says, you know, we can potentially fix this, and Joe and Michael become friends, and that's a very good ending. Um, there's not much 
else that I wanted to mention about this uh, story. I wrote some things horizontally. Um, Joe's three. Oh, and the mural story. So a couple of things. Uh, it once again introduces a new way of storytelling, which is apparently uh, a, uh, a big way of storytelling in Mexico and Mexican history, which is a, a mural wall, a, a painting on a wall that tells a story. Um, and that is something that Senora Julia tells him about, although she does give him a book of stories. So it's like, here's the traditional way of telling, of, here's the way that we're used to seeing of telling stories, but there's also this way. And it's also how um, there's a little bit, there's some uh, physical sets and people and wishbone walking around on physical sets in the story itself, but then there's also uh, a kind of a pan and, and, and even a mix of real people walking around, but also a pan of a, of a painted uh, mural telling the beginnings of the story of uh, Our Lady of Guadalupe and the history of Mexico. And I think that this is where I first saw and uh, you know, I grew up, my dad would give us um, fun foreign coins as rewards for things. And one of and a, a Mexican coin has this stylized uh, eagle with a snake on, I guess, some kind of a cactus uh, on the back of it. And I, and I, uh, as a kid, I couldn't really see the eagle and the snake and stuff. But in this episode, they show, uh, like the sign, stop here. This is where you're supposed to stop of the, of the traveling, uh, Aztecs, I guess, um, is, uh, the eagle with the snake landing on the thing. And I think that's, so that's where I first, that clicked for me. And I, and I realized, oh, that's what's on the back of the Mexican coin. Uh, that's important in Mexican history. So there's that too. But also, um, not able to give his mom a working music box, Joe um, writes, I think it's a poem or some kind of card or story about his three moms. His uh, birth mother, who, who raised him primarily, um, and... Senora Julia, who helped raise him when he was much younger, and then the neighbor Wanda, who was shocked to be <laughs> included in this, but really, um, really uh, thankful and grateful for it. And they all have a nice group hug at the end. But it's so it's another one of those kind of like the uh, found family episode of Space Cases. It's family isn't just necessarily um, what the defined words mother, father, sister, brother. Uh, it's it's. It can be um, people who are not blood-related. Um, entrepreneur, uh, based on the story of King Midas. Um, King Midas rescues a, a philosopher, uh, is rewarded by a god with the, the ability to turn anything that he touches to gold, and regrets it. That is, as you probably knew as soon as I said King Midas, that is the story of King Midas. And Wishbone is Midas. And, um, yeah, but the episode itself, Joe wants to start a business, perhaps because he spent his life savings in the previous episode on a uh, gift for his mother that he didn't really have to do, but he couldn't get a refund. Um, that is the second episode in a row about finding the perfect gift and a slightly opposite, well, I guess it's a similar message, but it's, it's one of those things where they could have spread the ep episodes out and not had two perfect gift for single parent uh, narratives back to back. Um, but Joe wants to start a business and, uh, he sees Wanda struggling with a ton of groceries and she's got a lot to do and he helps her with the groceries and has the idea, oh, I will help older people, I guess, presumably with groceries. He will go get groceries for them, deliver them. He will make money. Um, and you know, he takes it too far. He, gets really into it, he starts making money, he starts expanding, he's reading business books, uh, which are, which are, you know, business books and spreadsheets turn people into uh, tools and gears in a mechanism, and they cease to be people, and this is what happens, of course, with Sam and David, because they want to play along, they, you know, they realize that it's work and they're helping people, but uh, they want to have fun with it, they want to be with their friend, not with their boss, and he decides he wants to be a boss um, and uh, and takes it way too far, gets in over his head. There's not, I mean, especially because the, uh, the Midas story is so simple 
and uh, it's it's drawn out and it looks nice and it's well done. But there's not much about to to this episode. Not not a lot of specific things. Um, I should mention that uh, in the in the uniforms is one of the um, is one of the aspects of the business that comes up between the trio, and apparently they had agreed in a simpler time that Sam would do the uniforms, and she paints very nice fruits and vegetables and things on t-shirts, including a little one for Wishbone, uh, who there's a, there's a great shot of Wishbone riding in one of the carts surrounded by groceries, and he's cackling the uh, Larry Brantley, who I mentioned earlier, does great, did a great uh, uh, excited cackle. Um, and then Joe says, no, I got these, uh, these cheap, uh, serious uniforms from a secondhand sh store. So stuff like that, and giving him them appreciation certificates uh, to make them feel like, you know, make, making them both employee of the month at the same time. Um, and one of Joe's business books says 20 under 20, about teenage millionaires. It's, 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 it's one of those. Um, stories of let kids be kids, kid, and also kids, you should want to be kids because you don't get to be kids forever. Um, so those are the, uh, the, the, the themes of that episode. And like I said, um, Joe gets in over his head, especially when Sam and David, being kids, wanting to have fun, decide to race their carts. David and his dad built built three uh, kind of chariots attached to the backs of their bikes so that they can deliver more groceries and take more groceries around. And Joe and David, not the smartest thing in the world, but again, their kids, decide to race them. Sam falls over and cuts her knee. And... Here's where we know Joe's gone off the deep end. Joe is concerned about the groceries. David is concerned about Sam's knee. And David and Sam resign. Um, which happened, what was the last episode fairly recently where that happened? It was the one where Joe was with the cool basketball kids. But what was that story? I forget. Might have been the, no, it wasn't the Three Musketeers. Um, I forget. But some of these stories... But it's it's for kids, so it's repeating repeating the uh, theme the the message. Don't take your friends for granted. Um, so let's see. Let's see. Oh, uh, there's one, and I don't know why he was. But to further emphasize this, Joe is looking up where it says anything about friends in the business books, and the business books, of course, don't say anything about friends. So there's that element to it. Um, so. Bacchus undoes King Midas's wish, and Joe closes his business and gives Sam and David, out of appreciation, not certificates, he gives them the t each $10 from the $20 that he has left over from having to hire someone else to make the deliveries that he's supposed to, to deliver. And they use that money to take him to Pepper Pete's. So, everybody is back to being a kid again and prioritizing the right things. So... That's that for those episodes, and let's see, the next ones are, uh, one of them is The Phantom of the Opera, and then the other, The Story of the Deathless Voice, which is a Native American tale, and uh, I know that I've seen The Phantom of the Opera one, I don't know that I've seen The Story of the Deathless Voice, but again, I haven't specifically remembered a lot of episodes and then I see them and I think pretty much at this point I am re-watching all of these because even if I don't remember them I watch them and I think oh yes I remember at least that image I did watch this episode it just didn't stick with me like the Phantom of the Opera one for obvious reasons so I will be back let's wag another tale <laughs>